you know, like, every, everyone plays Shredder in pretty much every deck, and it's not, like, for the 4-3 body, but it's for the fact that it leaves something behind. And, you know, even though there's there's a bunch of really crappy 2-drops out there, you, you don't really mind so much because, it, you know, it just you just want the body <clears throat> to, uh, to drop out after the Shredder dies and stuff. So Effigy, like, takes that effect, and... You know, you could it, it applied to applied to you know your any minion on your board, and so I think just you know that combined with Mad Scientist, which is was broken in its own right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I think you know that's gonna really help like Tempo Mage. Maybe maybe you see a list out there that runs like three secrets, like one of each uh, of Mirror Counter Spell and Effigy, and uh, I don't know, I, I really like it a lot. Just kind of helps snowball the board. Keep board control. Yeah, the value you can potentially get out of this card, especially off the Mad Scientist, is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it because it's so flexible. It's not... It's something between Mirror Entity and that it'll keep your board presence if your minions die and kind of like duplicate because you get a similar mana value of whatever minions dying. Right. Just a little quicker. So, I don't know, I, early on, this one was revealed initially, I felt like it was so strong that maybe we might get to the point where Kazan Mystic starts to get more popular, but who knows. Yeah, and I think anytime you're adding more traps, it, it, it makes your opponent think more to yeah. kind of like more, you know, suboptimal play, so, yeah. so I think he's just kind of helping that, because it gets to the point where like, you see it kind of in Tempo Mage. Like, the standard is the, the two mirror, one counter spell. So you're thinking 66%. It's a you know, mirror you play around that. and So it kind of gets to the point where it's predictable. We've seen the Mech Mage used to run the, the two mirrors and the, the scientists. It's become kind of predictable, easy to play around. So we kind of see, like, the Secrets package run out. We have even see people take Tempo Mage and take the Secrets package out. But adding in another secret that, that plays a little bit differently, it, it's just one more thing. You know, it's, it's the advantage is the person playing the trap, you know. So this kind of helps it. Kind of, I think we'll kind of see the same thing a little bit later with Bear Trap and Hunter. Just more playable secrets to give your opponent more things to think about is just going to help whoever's playing the trap. Yeah, I think especially since this is the type of secret that's going to span across a couple of different mage archetypes, the class is getting so flexible lately that, I don't know, the mind games might just get crazy with this card. We'll have to see. Right. So we'll go to uh, Inbox Choice. Yep. I have Varian Ren, which is pretty easy pick. It seems, uh, seems to be getting a lot of hype. A lot of people love it. I've seen on Reddit, somebody, you know, asking, like, what's the first deck you're going to make? And there's some people who's like, I'll craft Ren and put him in my control warrior. You know, nothing uh, nothing fancy, nothing just, you know. The, the, the interesting thing about Ren is he's really strong, you know, being able to draw three cards. Control warriors always struggled a little bit with card draw. So, I mean, like, even if you're not drawing minions, you're just drawing three cards. It's pretty strong. Um, the the interesting thing is there, there's the drawback. Like you don't want to, you don't want Ren to to make you overextend into something. And there's also some some battle cries which are kind of useful. You know, like your yep. your BGH, your Alex Straza, that kind of thing. So I'm a little curious to see if Ren kind of kind of shifts Control Warrior deck a little bit. There was a time where people were running. They took out Alex and they were running like KT. Uh, maybe Sneed, Yasera, kind of more cards like that. Mm -hmm. Rent might kind of kind of change a little bit how control the cards Control Warrior wants to run. And the other thing is, if this Picard becomes popular, and Control Warrior sees a significant you know percentage on the ladder, like other classes are going to have to start. I can see Paladins run into Qualities, Warriors start running into Brawls. Like this card, if it is as good as some people think and control warrior becomes popular it's really gonna have an effect on all the other decks kind of 
how you have to to play against it. Yeah, I agree. I um, that was that was one of like the things, first things I thought about with Variant Rain was uh, how how it might change some of the late game package of Control Warrior, and we might see less Alex and more Ysera, and uh, you know maybe some KD and all that, like you're mentioning. And uh, yeah, and you know, like, like you mentioned, like the decks are gonna have to respond to it if it is as good as as everyone thinks it is. So. All right. I think. Go ahead. Control Warrior is definitely going to change a lot, no matter what, after TGT, because you also have possible dragons to be thinking of, and I don't know if those can be if those can get built alongside Varian in the same deck, maybe because dragons are pretty heavy and Varian's ten mana, so those might be two different decks. But overall, I just think it's going to change a lot. Yeah, I agree with that, and I think um, I think you know, like you mentioned with the uh, Dynasis uh, Aspire, it's a Druid is going to change a lot too. I think. Um, I mean, because Druid is so full. But um, so my choice for the best class card is Living Roots, which um, you know isn't a very flashy card, but I think the one mana spells can be so useful and it's just I mean it's, it's like a card that's always great to have in your opening hand because the the two one one saplings I think will work great for the a token druid and and the removal that early removal is really useful against aggro so the flexibility without taking kind of that normal um, value hit for having the flexibility I mean it's great value is two ones mm -hmm. ones and it's you know just as good as all the other two damage one mana spells so so my question with that one is uh like we we don't really see a whole lot of one mana uh, uh two damage spells getting played anymore and so like i'm wondering i guess i'm wondering like if that's better than zombie trail and i don't i don't know like the the flexibility uh, you mentioned is is definitely like the big the, the best asset that it has going for it. I think I think a plus to it is that you've got your if you are running a, a token druid or a fast druid something with combo. Yeah. This can yeah. fill in that mm -hmm. nine mana for savage to make it a little bit harder to play around. Yeah, that's definitely true. I don't know how major that is. That's just too damage, but I feel like a lot of the time you skirt pretty close on that edge of 14 against the Druid. No, yeah, I, th I think that is significant. I mean, two damage is... It's only two damage, but like like you said, like that line. I don't know. Yeah, I it'll be interesting. It, does. It, it's hard to imagine it because the... You know, the common Druid is so full i mean this obviously doesn't really but yeah. it's got that one spot in there but i think there's a lot of potential in the card for new archetypes that may be coming hopefully yeah another thing i've, I've seen mentioned with that is maybe if you want to play some joust minions you would prefer living root to zombie chow so it doesn't get pulled in a joust mm -hmm. yep and yep. that's definitely a plus too i think that may also be a reason to play the um the paladin weapon the lance if you're if you're trying to depend on winning some jousts, you could try to use that as a some early yeah, board control. It's possible that could be good as a one of because I think if you're looking to joust as a paladin, you're probably going to be a little bit heavier. Uh, those knife jugglers are really only a mid range paladin thing, so you wouldn't really want those for jousting. And right, yeah, it's possible. I think mini bot stays in no matter what. Uh, that, card so so good. <laughs> that card is so good. Of course. That card is so good. But yeah, I'd really love to see Token Druid come back. That's a cool duck. Yeah. I mean, so, it, you know, if you kind of look back at some of the Token, like, you could see some turns where, like, you have a teacher on board, you play, like, a Living Roots, and mm -hmm. then a, a Power of the Wild um, would just be 
you know, even more sync term for, for for only one more mana than than what yeah. we were seeing before. Yeah, that would be overwhelming to most decks. Yeah, you know, so so we we can see like maybe maybe if token comes back, you know, roots will, will definitely go in there and uh, for for only one mana to be able to maybe make a token with the teacher and then get two on board and then buff them up with a, a buff. It's a uh, you know you'll be able to have some really strong turns. I don't. The problem with token is like kind of like just just kind of getting that early board, not getting run over. Like I've tried to play a little bit, and you know I think it's why we really don't see too much of it now. You know we see like combo, we see ramp, don't really see a whole lot of token. But it if there were enough cards, kind of bring it back. Roots will will, will definitely be a be a staple in that. I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so honorable mention for best class card. I think has to go to Tuscar Totemic since uh, it was chosen by a lot of us, but uh, was not picked to be talked about by anybody. So let's uh, take a minute and talk about Tuscar. That is the three mana three two, correct? That's, yeah, the three two summon a random totem. Yeah. So I think even even if it summons a totem, like a, a basic shaman totem, you're probably not very unhappy with that. Um. And then, like, it has the potential to just pull a totem that, that just really wins the game. Like, right there. Like, the, the totem golem, the, the two mana, three, four, it could spawn from that. Um, One and eight. You know, like, something like a mana tide totem, like, you'd be really happy yeah. with. Maybe even a flame tongue, you know? It's, yeah, even that, that vitality awesome. if you're up against an aggressive duck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think, I think again, playing that and getting a mana tide. Especially that early, like some classes might not even be able to answer the Minotaur there. Like getting two draws off and bettering Shaman, um, it's huge. Just just off your two draw, which you still have the three two there. You know, you still have that. Would uh, just be crazy. You know, just like Mike said, it's when you first see it, you're like, oh, if you get Totem Golem, you know, that's amazing value. But like, just getting normal Totem, it's still pretty good. And then it's you, still good. you just have. You still just have the chance of getting something, you know, really great with like the Totem Golem or the Mana Tide, and so I really think this is a really strong card. I think I think Blizzard saw Midrange Shaman kind of needs some help, and we've seen a lot of cards that to try to help it out. And I think this is kind of the maybe maybe the top of the list. Like I really think this is w one of the strongest cards, and if Midrange Shaman has the chance of coming back. This will be uh, kind of a big part of it. It's just a really crazy two drop. It's kind of interesting the the parallel between what they're doing for mid range shaman and what they did for mid range paladin in GVG. Yeah, if you've got the totem golem and the mini bot, yep. and then Tusker totemic and muster. muster, and then the what is it? Uh, Thunder bluff valiant. Yes, like the and quartermaster. quartermaster, right? So hopefully that's, that's it works for Shaman. That is an interesting parallel. I never actually thought of it that way. Yeah, I, I mean, those are the three cards that made mid-range Paladin. Absolutely. Yeah, All right. Think, go go ahead. Some, oh, yeah, we can go ahead. No, let's go ahead. Yeah, I think some people, and I can almost see this, it's basically right now we just haven't had a good mid-range Shaman for so long that some people are kind of thinking that Tuscar Totemic and Totem Golem might just kind of blend in to the Mech Shaman, just become tools of the uh, aggression. But I think, I think a card like Thunder Bluff Valiant should be strong enough to make that uh, Totem-focused mid-range Shaman deck work. It's definitely something a lot of people are going to be trying. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about best neutral cards. And Slimsh, your choice for best neutral card was Twilight Guardian. Yes, Twilight Guardian. <laughs> so the reason I stuck this card as the best neutral card is because... So we had... Naxxramas and GVG, those shook things up pretty accordingly. It was Blackrock Mountain kind of didn't really get the dragon thing to stick. We see um, there's some versions of Control Warrior that 
run a few dragons and enough cycle to reliably get the Blackwing Corruptor off. And there's, of course, Malagos Warlock, which is pretty cool. But I feel like there's really no true dragon decks out there. Uh, dragon Paladin failed pretty miserably. Um, yeah, but so Twilight Guardian being the dragon itself and benefiting greatly from having a dragon in hand and just being at four mana and being a big taunt, I feel like it's going to go a really long way to helping dragon decks out. Yep, absolutely. If if dragon decks are a thing after the expansion, it'll be on the back of Twilight Guardian. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, lo I love it. I love my dragon shield master. My dragon shield master. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it'll, it'll make the, the, um, the mechanic a lot better. Or the uh, the Blackwing Technician, a lot more consistent, and uh, it's much better in the four spot than the Hungry Dragon. Yeah, it's it's or it's, Hungry it's Dragon. Really, it's a really strong card. I, I'm still like, I'm still a little skeptical, like whether this will be enough, kind of on its own to kind of kind of make some of the the Dragon decks viable. Like Slim said, we we seen a. Uh, I've seen the Dragon Warrior, which kind of control with some dragons and corruptors. That's something I play a little bit. It's uh, pretty good. And uh, seen like Kilbert playing some Dragon Mage, which which isn't too bad. It plays a lot, kind of like a control mage. But um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see if Guardians like enough to kind of kind of boost it over and kind of make some some of these dragon decks a you know a little bit stronger uh, or not. Because like just cinching along. Hasn't really been able to do that. It doesn't have the uh, the dragon tag, so, so that's a big part of it. That's a but huge just, part of it, I think. Yeah. I just wonder, like, if it'll be enough to kind of get the whole thing, or if we're still, like, parts away. Uh, but I'm really glad Blizzard added that. It's it's another thing for the dragons, and may maybe we'll get it this suspension if we don't. I'm sure they'll add some more dragons eventually. It, there's gonna be a really awesome dragon deck, and it might be, I believe, be with TGT, and it might not be. But it's cool that they're adding more in. This is definitely what the dragon decks needed. You know, an early dragon, another dragon tag, something. You know, a taunt, something kind of, kind of stall out a little bit, help against the aggro. So it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, just how well it does. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's definitely some of the first decks that I'll be building and trying out, are dragon decks. Alright, and so on to Mange's top neutral. I chose uh, Justicar Trueheart, the legendary that improves your hero power, or your bait, your starting hero power. And um, we're, we're talking about best neutral cards. I think it probably belongs in and you know a few limited decks, but you can you can kind of slam that in Control Warrior, and you know gain four health every time you use the Hero Power. It synergizes so well with with Shield Slam. Um, you know you, you might be able to see it in like Priest, just, just to gain four life at a time, and you know heal up some of your minions uh, for four. And and maybe um, I was I was wondering if maybe we might see it in like a, a really slow Control Paladin. Because I feel like the ability to, to make two dudes at a time is is really strong. Um, but other than that, I'm not too sure. You know, I'd, I'd be interested to see if, if another class can kind of make it work. But I think I think the effect, despite the card being kind of slow, I, I think it's six mana. Um, it's it's really powerful. So I, I think it's it has one. You know, of all the the TGT cards, it has some of the highest potential. To, to create a deck that um that might not other might not other uh, might not otherwise exist. Well, I like it just for being such a cool card. I mean, the fact that it's like it's so far from anything else that was already in the game, changing yeah. your hero power like, like that is really cool that it's in the game. Yeah. I kind of look at just a card the same way, a little bit kind of like Emperor, where like. But maybe not quite as widespread. But we see Emperor 
it really fits in well with the number of decks. You play it, I mean, the, the body's okay, but you mainly play it for the battle cry. You're kind of taking that one turn to really make everything everything after that a lot better. And just scar is kind of the same thing. You you just mainly kind of get in the battle cry. You're not the body's not really the thing. You get the battle cry, and then from there on out, your 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 late game is so much better than it was before. Yeah, kind of like emperor and emperor, we don't see it in every deck. Um, a lot of control warrior don't run it. Um, but we see it like in Combo Druid, Breeze Mage, Handlock, things like that. Um, I think Just Car, I think definitely see it Control Warrior, um, maybe some Priests, like Mike said. And the, the Control Paladin thing is, is another interesting thing because Control Paladin has installed enough late game to kind of like afford you to do that. Like, I think this might be a little tough running in. Like this, like the standard mid range list we see right now, but having that hero power, like the your 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 hero power will now outpace whoever you're playing against hero power, and so like you know with as much stalls control paladin has, they can just hero power get get the guys out just just have that little bit of annoyance, a little bit of pressure, without really having to. To commit any cards, you know. So we might could see it if, if there's a really control paladin type list that, that comes out. Probably see it in that as well. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I'm excited about Just Guard True Heart. Not number one on my list to craft if I can't open her, but it's definitely really exciting because you know you will be playing this a six man a six three. It's she's going to die fairly easily, so you're going to be suffering a tempo loss, but if you're playing her in the first place, then you're obviously going to be in it for the long game, and you're going to have the tools to catch back up after that. Maybe weapons if you're a paladin or warrior. Uh, I, I I like the effect for paladin, I do. It's, uh, I don't know, they're pretty scary if the recruits, if you're running quartermaster and your opponent will have to respond to them and they can only have so many resources to do it really yeah so we've already seen like control where we've all played against those games where like they're just arming up they get to a ridiculous amount they've armored up you know seven or eight times in, in the late game you know now imagine that times two like as a control warrior that's just once you get this down and you start getting that four health every single turn, and then yeah. it just helps a little bit too with like your shield slams and everything. Uh, I think it just control warrior becomes even more, you know, turtle just yeah. becomes really really strong, uh, yeah. really think... annoying card. If a control warrior plays <laughs> it and you're not close to killing them, you're just you just feeling <laughs> really bad. Yeah, I could see it being good in Control Warrior. They're probably, I mean, as long as you can keep their board in, your opponent's board in check, four armor return is just amazing. So you probably run double brawl, maybe, and I don't know. That sounds like a pretty interesting deck, if it can be good. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what's interesting is that if it does become good, you could see the, I'm not going to think of the name, but the, the minion that swaps the hero power. Yes. Yeah, hacked in to defeat that. <laughs> That's the spell stealer. That'd be that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so in bulk, your choice for the best neutral card. I have Clockwork Knight. It's not a uh, it's not a real sighting, you know, a five by five mech, a give, giving a one one to another mech. It's not super flashy, but um, we have a lot of really good mechs. The, the one spot that's kind of missing is is the five drop. We have Fell Reaver. The Fell Reaver kind of commits you to a more aggressive approach. We don't really have you know anything there. You can have more of a mid range, kind of less aggressive deck. And so it's like like with Mech Mage, it, you know you have all your mechs, your package or whatever have Antonidas Boom, and then the five slot usually would be like be like two drakes. Um, it's just a little bit extra card draw, the spell power. 
but it was I think it was more like there's not anything else good here to play, so we'll play the Drakes. And we've seen with the the Mech Mage that's running Fell Reavers now, you don't have to have the card draw. It's not, you know, hundred percent essential. Nope. So, so with Clockwork Knight, I think you can I think it just kinda gives a lot more strength to some of the mech decks and it also allows um, to take a little bit more mid range approach than the uh, than like the Mech Shaman or the, the Mech Mage that's running the Fell Reavers. And uh, you know, if you I mean a, a five for five fives are already kinda okay. And then you should be able to have a mech on board. There's less sticky things, you know, your Noitron is hard to kill. I don't know if you run Harvest Golem, but if you do, that's another one that's hard to kill. Um, another thing, too, is like a pretty center play is like you play a Shredder on four. To Belcher. They, they play Belcher on five. It's kind of comes a little tricky, kind of hard to do. You play this, you buff up the Shredder, take care of the first half. You still have your 5-1 your Shredder, your 5-5, five, five, you know, Clockwork Knight. So I don't know how fast the. the Kind of the meta will, will speed up, but I'm really excited to have like a good five drop mech and uh, kind of try to see how much like it's like a mid range mech shaman can work if mech mage can be a little bit stronger with it, you know, some kind of those kind of things. Because I mean, just the body's okay for the stats, and then being able to buff up your mechs and kind of give them a little bit extra trading power, trading up, and everything. I think could be really strong. Uh, so I'm really excited for this card. Hopefully it'll be, you know, kind of give the mech decks, you know, a little bit more mid-range and a little bit, you know, just make them a little bit stronger. Okay. Yeah, when I when I first saw the Clockwork Knight, that was the, the scenario that, um, that I was first like, oh wow, like now we can buff Shredders to kill Belchers. And that seems like a pretty strong power play. So. Yeah. I'm a really big fan of the Fell Reavers in my mech decks, and I'm I'm sad that they might get replaced, but uh, it, it is a really strong card, and uh, I'm I'm interested to see how how that'll work versus uh, the Fell Reavers and, and the mech decks. Yeah, I think I think what's interesting is going back to Effigy, like the Mech Mage, for example, might since Mirror Energies got a little easy to play around and sometimes even detrimental. I think Mech Mages might get the secret packages going again, and then maybe taking out some of those earlier drops that they have now, and just favoring in the Harvest Golems, the Clockwork Knights, things that are better to get off of Effigy. It might be worth trying. I can definitely see it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, uh, I'm excited for the options that mech decks now have. I was hoping we'd see more mechs in the TGT set to kind of help facilitate more of a mid-range mech style, but... Yeah, I guess this is the only one, the one and only mech, right? For yeah, TGT? I, I believe it is. Yeah. Wow. Alright, so my choice for the top neutral card is Itis Darkbane. And... Oh, that's the one that deals random damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shield. Right. Right. I think this one's a little better than the other one because I think that having it just seems like more of an aggressive card. The the decks that I see that are going to buff are ones that are getting generating spare parts or like the Paladin deck with the uh, with their buffs. Um, the aggressive Paladin. But yeah, I mean it's you know the stats are good. The, the effect is powerful enough to be valuable, uh, a little bit hard to pull off, but I can see it uh, definitely earning a spot in some decks. So so when you see Dark Bane, what kind of decks are you uh, thinking about putting her in? Um, Aggro Paladin primarily. Um, yeah. Yeah, so like something aggressive makes sense because if, if you're controlling and the damage is going to their face, you feel bad, but if you're aggressive, you'll feel good. Yeah. Agro Paladin <laughs> was the first thing that jumped to my mind when I saw um, that card and the twin, the other the other card. Yeah. I thought it might be easiest to proc the, your effect with the spell there. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and this also is not, uh, if you want to use the, um, the seal, the three mana. Of champions? Seal of champions. Seal of champions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. This one works a lot better with that than the sister. Yeah. Yeah, this, it'd be really scary to get a divine shield on this one. Just yeah. outside from a spell or something. Right, and the other thing, too, is that that one doesn't put this up into BGH territory. Yeah, that, like, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You're at that yeah. real safe point of, of six, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six, six attack, divine shield minion. That's <laughs> doing big damage to your board or face. Is... That is scary. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I first saw those two cards, I thought of uh, I thought of Aggro Paladin. But I also kind of thought of uh, some kind of Tempo Mage uh, variant. Because right, right right now, the only three drop that most Tempo Mages have is uh, Flame Waker. And you don't really want to play Flame Waker on three unless you can follow it up with like a coin and uh, one mana spell. So this kind of gives uh, Tempo Mage more of a true three drop. And then, you know, maybe, maybe you have some spare parts, you know, with mm -hmm. the... Clockwork gnomes and all that to kind of, you know, really, really push some tempo. Yeah, I, I think, I think a mage it might be a little tough because you're relying on one the spare part, and then you yeah. have to get correct. You know, there, there's a few of them that you know you uh, you might not want to like you know you can't recall it or whatever. You don't really want to freeze it, uh, so you kind of have to get the spare part and then get one of the those good spare parts to buff it yep but uh so yeah but it'll be interesting um uh, you know three for three four is pretty good and then uh pretty strong will effect so yeah and, and paladin has some decent um self-targeting effects that are also cheap that aren't currently being run that blessing of wisdom Blessing of Wisdom, exactly. And and a, a lot of them, are too, are playing one Blessing of Might. So I would see this card kind of uh, creating some more incentive to move that up to two. I'd like right. to see Blessing of Wisdom see some play. That seems like a really cool card. <laughs> it's it's a very interesting card. Yeah, I mean, Darkbane costs three. So if you could somehow get a Blessing of Wisdom deck... With some consistency going, maybe drop it on Divine Shield minions. Then maybe you could even start to cut maybe one Divine Favor or something, since Dark Bane's three. <laughs> eh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't play much aggro, Paladin. Alright, well, let's move on to the worst class cards. I, I saw you Rose Kibler on stream, like, not that <laughs> long ago with aggro, Paladin. Yeah, that was like... I played... Like four games with that, and I just happened to run into Kibler. <laughs> <laughs> Rushed him. It's too bad. I love Kibler. I do too. He's yeah. great. <laughs> All right. So, Slimsh, let's talk about your worst last card. Oh, yeah. Here he is <laughs> Magnetor Alpha. So, I feel like for some of these class cards that are kind of bad, uh, they might be. Maybe a weapon that we're going to talk about later, or a spell. But I feel like if you're a minion and you're bad, then it's just kind of even worse. Because there's really no utility about the minion so much. You just It doesn't have charge. You're not going to play the spell charge on it. You're just kind of going to drop this guy down on four. Maybe. And then... I don't know, a three-mana minion can kill him before he's able to get his attack off and do the mini uh, Faux Reaper effect. So, I don't know, this guy's an epic, too. I, uh, I don't know if I open too many of these. I just don't really see it fitting in anything unless somehow, I don't know, it would take a lot of commitment to buff this guy's health. To get them going, so I don't know. Th this is the card that came to me. I love his effect. I love I love the fell uh, the faux reaper effect. I, I wish it was on a little bit of a better body, but I guess uh, Blizzard might be afraid to to make something like that playable. Yeah, I don't know. He could have been. I guess a three five. Yeah, warrior has good ways to buff attack, so maybe it maybe too much health is too good. I, it's hard to say. 
Yeah. Yeah, you, you drop him down and then, like, whirlwind and upgrade. Or not upgrade. Um, <laughs> what's what's the plus three, plus three? Oh, Rampage. Rampage, there you go. And then, you, then you start wrecking faces, and then it gets BGH. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, this... This card doesn't make much sense to me the way it's lined up. I can't ever see getting value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so bad. Brian doesn't even want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah, it, it's a really cool fact, but, like, the three health, like, it's just you're not going to be able to, like, actually get your, your, your faux reaper attack in, so it's a little unfortunate. Something like, like, three five would have definitely been, probably been... A little bit too crazy. Uh, maybe something like um, maybe a three four would, would have maybe been a little bit better than like maybe we could have uh, seen a little bit of action with it. Maybe not. Uh, but yeah, with the three health, it's just it's just gonna die before it ever does anything. So especially like at four. So you're playing this on four. I mean, three drops. Just about all the three drops are able to kind of take care of it and. Not really going to be able to do a whole lot. So. All right, so on to Mange's choice for the worst class card. I chose the priest card convert. Um, it's it's probably not like the very worst, but it is something I think is pretty bad. Uh, I believe it says that it's a two mana spell that copies any enemy minion and places that card into your hand. So it's it's just basically like a much worse faceless manipulator um, because you have to pay the two mana to get the card into your hand, and then you have to like pay that mana cost of whatever you're copying, and you can't even copy like friendly minions. So if you have you know if, if you're a priest, you always thought still Tyrion, and now you can't you know convert Tyrion and put him back to your hand. It's just. I don't. I don't really see a situation where that I'll ever see play outside of like, you know, troll fun decks. I would rather have faceless manipulator every single time, which doesn't really see play anymore. Yeah, I think just about the only case you would want this over faceless manipulator is if your opponent had a battle cry minion that you were really interested in paying two more mana for. Yeah. To get the effect. Yeah. Like an Alex. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's get an it's extra BGH card, but <laughs> an extra BGH. Yeah, I, I, I think I would, I would like it a lot more. It still wouldn't see play, but I would, I would definitely like it a lot more if you could at least copy friendly minions. Yeah. But, um, yeah. All right. So then, let's see. And Bulk's your choice is the Poison Blade. Yeah. Boy. I mean, this, this, is kind of the, this is kind of the slam dunk of, of the worst class part. <laughs> I kind of felt like with nobody else picking it, if we didn't say it, somebody's going to be like, what is wrong with them? Well, at least one of them has to, has to say something about this. Yeah, so this one's be. pretty easy to talk about. We've all kind of seen it. It's just, just way too slow. Even trying to think of some kind of like gimmicky control kind of situations like some of these cards you could think of some kind of weird niche kind of thing like poison blade just too slow anything that you might kind of crazy you'd want to do with it there are already better options yeah like assassin blades different things like that so it's just a it's a really bad card i don't really don't really know what they're going for here i guess i guess trying to give Give a uh, rogue a, a little something with inspire, like kinda, you know. I don't know. It's just mana cost is way too high. It's, it's way too slow. Most, I mean, all of our ro rogue decks now are, are not, you know, none of them pl play that slow. And even if they did, they're they're a lot better options. So this is kind of the the easy pick for for you know worst class card. Uh, I mean. Who wouldn't want a six mana Stormforge X on turn five? <laughs> but think so. If you like, you keep hero powering throughout the game, you might be able to kill something big. <laughs> huh? You just need to get 
uh, garrison commander and maiden of the lake god. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Faceless manipulator, the cold era Drake. Yeah, I mean, I could see we where they were going, where they were going with this because Rogue really has no way at all. Right. To take advantage of Inspire, and this gives Rogue an opportunity, but it's just way too expensive. Yeah, I feel like they, if they were going to try to give Rogue some kind of Inspire, they just need to. Like, I, I can see where a weapon like this, where like instead of breaking your weapon, it kind of gets stronger or something, but it has to be more powerful, not cost as much than this, you know. I'm not sure exactly the exact stats that would have been, you know, balanced with it, but definitely not this. Yeah. Whenever I see a card that looks this bad, I I feel like the developers during their testing figured out something that was just like super yeah, you're... broken about it. <laughs> like this... lurk somewhere in there. Is... Yeah, some combo that we've never thought of that's just like totally unbeatable. They're like, well, we have to make this really expensive. Got to be. Uh, it's in the pirate deck with Captain Greenskin or something. <laughs> Yeah, there's maybe something out there somewhere. Some 10-mana combo where you just well, like a one-turn kill with a poison blade. <laughs> if it is out there, I can tell you right now, uh, our teammate, uh, Captain Murdoch, will find it. He specializes in playing terrible decks. <laughs> I know he will test the hell out of it. <laughs> I, I think you could spend all game trying to make this weapon big and then... It's just going to end up in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, so, in my choice for the worst class card that we've all had the uh, probably the pleasure of experiencing badness is Acid Maw. Oh yeah. Um, I just hate this card so much. <laughs> why? Why does it cost seven mana? <laughs> Dread Scale costs three. <laughs> why did like why why would they do that? The ten mana combo. <laughs> uh, so terrible. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I can't think of anything redeeming about this. Mm -mm. I mean, it does have the. I'm sure we probably done in the brawl with like the unleash synergy where you kind of like clear a board, but yep. for the most part, your your opponent's not gonna have maybe one or two kind of threatening minions. So you can do Unleash with Hunter Marks and get th the same thing done <laughs> a whole lot cheaper. Yeah, but so, Brian, then you don't have the 4-2 afterward. And this, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, like... like it's if, worth the 7 mana. Oh, yeah. If Hunter, Hunter, if Hunter ever went really, really, really slow, I mean, this is kind of like a, you know, a guaranteed board clear, but it's, uh, yeah, it's really slow and it doesn't really fit into any of the current Hunter decks, so... But, I mean, you know, what you can do is try to get somebody that's playing on their phone and then, you know, kind of try to steal oh, yeah. animation time, you know? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the... the Combo just... with Nazdormu. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It does have a neat animation, the spitting the acid. That's kind of cool. Yeah. That's why I hate it. It's just, it takes so long. Yeah, why it, does it, over, have to spit? it overkills the hound. They're already yeah, dead. Why, and it spits why does on. it have to spit acid on the hound? <laughs> it would be so much better if it just went to the other minion. <laughs> uh, Alright, on to worst neutrals. <laughs> Slimsh, your choice for the worst neutral is... Ogor's Champion. Yes. Uh, pull it up now. Yeah, I mean, these kinds of cards are kind of cool. It seems like just about everyone has a champion, more or less, but I don't know. I I like Mogor a lot better than his champion. He's <laughs> just a little bit more expensive. He, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a really weird card with five health at six mana. and I feel like you would just play Rogue and play their, um, what's the one, the Ogre Ninja? Which is a five yes. mana six six same yep. effect. Uh -huh. I feel like you just play that. Oh, oh yeah. this is a pretty funny card. <laughs> so M, M Bulk and I were were talking not too long ago. I think really late uh, a couple nights ago, 
and he told me, you know, Mike, one of these days, this card's going to show up in a deck somewhere with someone like OT King, someone with Wind Fury or something. And he had misread the card and thought it was like a stealth. <laughs> or like so I was like, what are you talking about? Like, that's so bad. No, I think I think what this is, the being six mana, this is the, the BGH bait for your boon. <laughs> you play this, hope they don't have five attack on the board, give them the BGH it, and then play your boon. Like it sets up your curve perfectly, you know? I it's funny that, because I like to use my BGH as, or my boom as BGH bait for other things. For Fell yeah. Reaver. These that's days. A, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely like Mogre much better than Mogre's Champion. Yeah. yeah, it suffers the same problem as the, um, the Magnetar Alpha. Yeah, just. Yeah. Poor Alpha. I mean, the the Magnetar Alpha even had a a good effect, but Mogo's champion has yeah it, completely it's a, a horrible effect unless you manage to go past Taunt and hit them in the face for eight, which is pretty good. All right. So Mange, your choice for the worst neutral card was the Argent Watcher. The Argent Watcher. Um, I think that's two mana, two four, and you cannot attack with the card. Unless you uh, inspire, unless you use the hero power. So, like, I, I don't really know. Like, I don't know why it exists, honestly. Like, you have to play it on two. And then if you want it to attack, you have to miss your three drop. And it can attack one time. You have to play off curve, like, every time you want it to attack. I don't know why I would... Like, play that over, like, just a regular two drop. Like, why wouldn't I just play a River Crocolis and not have to invest two mana every time I want to attack with it? You know, I, I, maybe, maybe, and I don't see it, but like, after GVG, for a little while, there was a, um, a Silent Druid, a, uh, Wailing Soul. Uh, yeah, Wailing Soul Druid, yes. <laughs> That's, I forgot what that card was called. Wailing Soul Druid, then it played stuff like Ancient Watcher and Fowl Reaver and things with negative uh, text. And you drop the Wailing Soul and you'd get pretty good value out of your cards. Um, so maybe that, but like I don't see it. I'd, I'd rather have Ancient Watcher 100% of the time. Yep. If I wasn't playing some kind of silence gimmick deck, I'd rather have just like a River Crocolisk 100% of the time. It's it's really awful. Yeah, I think I think the stats are just too tame. Yep. If it was a, if it was a three four, I think it get it would get played, not widely, but people would definitely pick it up if it was a three four. It seems to kind of seems to only really make make sense in in priest, like kind of as a anti aggro thing where you can either heal yourself or, or heal up, uh, you know, and maybe let it, you know, two for one, three for one, or whatever, but. It yeah you know, for for the for the effect, its stats are a little, a little too tame. But I mean like, as you play this on two, and then on three you tack into something. I mean like, yeah like, I don't know, heal a zombie chow and then be able to attack with this. I don't know. It's like like you know the stats aren't good. I think, I think, maybe what they're going for is like, a um, kind of a, anti aggro card. I use something with priests because they're usually having to the hero power to to either heal themselves or heal up a minion kind of in the early game there. Um, yeah. Now, now that you mentioned priests, that makes me think of uh, their two four dragons, their two mana dragon synergy card that gets two four with taunt, which is way better than it's far better. Argent Watchman here. It's far better. I I really don't see why it couldn't have been like a three five. Like, even if it was a 3-5, I don't think it's, like, really good enough to see play in outside of, like, you know, niche decks. It, it just seems so under understat, or, yeah, over-costed, understated. Yeah, I, th I would think it would definitely see play as a 3-5. I'm not so sure about a 3-4, though, because, well, it, it's still a lot worse than the Totem Golem, right? Because the Totem Golem, yeah. you're probably just going to be <laughs> Hero powering on turn 3 as well. 
Yeah. I, I think if you get it to the point where it's a 3-5, it's getting a little too close to the stats of uh, Ancient Watcher. And then I feel like at that point, Ancient Watcher just never get played again. So I guess I can see kind of why they went with these stats, but they definitely could have been a little better. As it is, I wouldn't even play it in my Wailing Soul deck. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Ancient Watch is just so much better. Wailing right. Soul Druid was awesome, though. I yeah, yeah. That deck. you could silence your Death Lord. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun one. I played it a bit. Uh, let's see. I missed it. Okay, so, Imbolc's choice for the worst neutral <laughs> is Ice Howl. Yeah, it's the uh, non-mana 10 charge, but, but it can't attack heroes. Yeah. So it's kind of like kind of like a really expensive removal spell, and um, yeah. there's kind of some synergy where like you play it, you run in, uh, attack something, and then like the next turn, maybe you can silence, and then actually hit the hero with it. But that's a it's a, you know, really kind of, I don't think that's a situation you can get a whole lot. And then you're doing it on at least turn 10. Um, I think if you're if you're trying to get a, a removal, like if you're using it as removal, there's a whole lot better, cheaper options. If you're trying to get some kind of cheesy damage in, there's a whole lot of better options, like for cheaper. I just... I don't know, maybe somebody will do something crazy with it. I just, it doesn't make much sense to me right right now. Maybe it can be used as some, court of, uh, some sort of uh, finisher for, like, priests if you play, like, the zero mana silence spell. Uh, does it lose, does it lose charge in that case? Uh, I actually don't know, does it? Yeah, I think so. So, like, you can't even, like, it's, <laughs> it's going to have to be, like, a, like a next so turn. Actually, for some reason, I thought that was the exception. Like, the charge, like, activates. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I have to... There's something a little bit different about how charge works. Yeah. I'm gonna have to test that now with, like, Wolf Riders or something in a minute. I um, think I think what you want is to get this guy off of... Uh, th this could never happen, but if you got it off of Varian Rin, that'd be pretty cool. But you could say that about a lot of cards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I like the concept of the drawback of can attack heroes on a charge card, and then giving, um, giving a stat boost to as as like a balancing mechanism. I just think it could be useful at a much lower stats and a lower mana cost, because it, I mean, it's just it's just way too expensive to use. If you had like a a five mana five five with charge that couldn't attack heroes. Yeah. It would be kind of interesting. It's a really interesting effect, but I agree. It's it's definitely bad. Yeah, That's I would have liked boss. to see the mana or stats be a little different because Ice Hell is extremely similar to King Crush, which does not get played. Nope. But maybe with a little adjustment, other classes would play a neutral King Crush that couldn't uh, attack heroes. Maybe. I don't know. All right, and my choice for the worst is the Coliseum Manager. Oh. Which is... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just the card, you know, you would never want this in an Inspire deck. So, I don't know, why would you ever want it? It's the it's a very confusing uh, card ability. That's the one that returns to your hand. Yeah, yeah. It's a three yeah. mana two five. Yeah, that returns to your hand. Yeah. So this guy seems pretty similar to uh, the Argent Watchman as well, where it's the stats are just a little bit too tame for the mana cost. It's basically the Druid of the Flame in the Hawk form mm -hmm. with a downside. So that's just not very exciting. Yeah. That is confusing. Uh, that is clearly a negative effect. So I'm not sure why the stats would be so poor for the for three mana cost. 
I mean, I can only imagine that the idea was that it would it's gonna take out lep or take out knife jugglers all day and then get brought back to your hand, so you're getting some sort of card advantage. But that's really bad. It seems pretty bad. Yes. Yeah, I I, I don't think if you're fighting a deck that that has knife jugglers and stuff, I don't I don't think you need to lose that much tempo. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you don't really need the card advantage. No, you you really need something to stick. Uh, and I can't think of any card that gets would get buffed by this card like being played over and over or anything like that. So just a confusingly bad card. The the question of you got question of venture synergy there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your new meta. Questing adventure. Okay, so onto the the favorite fun card, Slimsh. Let's talk about the Murloc Knight. Yes. Murloc Knight. Yeah, it's funny. I was looking back. This one is my pick for a fun card, but I think it might actually be good. But I still think it's fun. Uh, just, it's a Paladin card. It's a Murloc Knight riding on a frog. I don't know. It just seems like a fun card to me. Summoning random Murlocs alongside your Silverhand Recruit kind of a weird picture. You might get a old Murkai or I don't know, if you got another Murloc Knight, it would that one's inspire would not trigger. Unless no. in the later turn. I don't know, but that'd be pretty crazy. Yeah, that it could be great. Yeah, I just think it's a fun card and I don't know, it might it might see use not necessarily in a Murloc deck even although I think if Paladins tried Maybe with that new um, that new secret, even maybe they could make Murlocs work. It probably wouldn't be much better than anything they're currently doing that's aggressive. I don't know. I just like the card. Yeah. Well, I like that it's a uh, you know the fact that it's Murloc means that it's generating its own tribal synergy, and you don't have to fill your deck with other Murlocs necessarily. Um, yeah. And I think that you know if you can get if you can get your hero power being buffed by um, the what is it? The, the the two mana that lets you use your hero power twice. Oh, and the garrison commander. garrison commander. Yeah, garrison commander, which I think is a really interesting card, and, and then like the lady of the lake. Um, this card could really snowball. Now it goes straight to the field, right? Summon means it. Yeah, yeah, it's straight onto the field. So you know, like if you're using your hero <laughs> power twice, you can get a. Blue Gill and uh You're gonna run out of <laughs> there's just not gonna be enough room. Too many Murlocs. <laughs> I hope it um it summons the recruit before the Murloc, I would imagine. Right? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, uh it seems like it from the animation. I think like when you're pinging with mage. Yeah. That happens first. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So you should see the golden version of it. It's the golden version is amazing. If you haven't, the, the tongue flick, it's so good. <laughs> that is an OP animation. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a legitimate argument against the power creep in the golden card animations. Blizzard, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, the art, the art's really good for TGT. It's fantastic. Like the armor on the Murloc and everything. It's it makes me so happy. <laughs> or on the, uh, yeah, Little Murloc. Okay. okay, so Main's your choice for the best, for your favorite fun card. It's the Ram Wrangler. So, I, I chose Ram Wrangler as my fun card. I'm actually, I think it might even be just flat out good rather than fun. But, um, it, it has the potential to just kind of win you the game. Like, right away. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have a beast on board and you can and you can trigger its effect, but uh, I mean, yeah, any any time you can like summon a random creature and a random beast at that, which is usually a lot of fun cards like, um, like Acid Maul. You know, we, we talked about how awesome that was earlier, <laughs> and like King Crush and just all these fun beasts. It's it's super cool. I think if it is good, um, if it turns out that it has a home and and mid range runner, uh, people are gonna really start playing around. 
uh, like beasts on board even more than they do now because everyone's afraid of Houndmaster now. And uh, I don't know. I think I think because of that, you might see it like, kind of like cycle in and out a little bit, kind of like Houndmaster cycles in and out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's a super cool card. It's super fun. And I, I'm I'm wondering if like if it is good, like if maybe you you see people take out shredders and like put in uh, Oasis Snapjaw. Oasis Snapjaw, yeah. Oh, definitely. And other other like high health uh, high health beasts. So I don't know. I'm I'm really interested to see what happens with it. Oh, I I hope it's bad. <laughs> the Flames <laughs> loves too it. Scary. I'm kind of with you. Yeah. I I don't want to be. I don't want to have to put Habit Nesting Murray in my deck. <laughs> yeah. I still don't have one of those. I would have to. I'd, ha- I'd oh, have to have a, a Habit to. to oh, that would feel horrible. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Rain Rain was a really fun card. I think. I think it. Oh, I'm kind of not sure the having to have the beast on board. Like, like with Hellmaster, sometimes it, it's kind of hard getting that off. It's. It was really hard when. Every deck ran Hellmaster, so you always knew to clear off the beast. And now with like face and hybrid, like you kind of the the threat of the Hellmaster disappeared, so everybody wasn't like dead set on, on clearing you know all the beast off. Um, so if this card became popular, people would prioritize the beast a lot more, so it'd be a little bit harder to get off. The other thing is Shredder is such a strong four drop. Yeah, it it really is. So like you're you're kind of having to. You know, I mean, you're not always going to be playing it on curve, but if you are, like you play Shredder on four, then you have to have a beast from one, two, or three still alive to play Ramlinger. And whereas, like, you don't really like playing Hellmaster naked, but a four, four, three is okay. Whereas, like, Rambling, Wrangler, you, you really probably just, unless you're really desperate, are just holding on to where you can get the, the battle crop. You're not wanting to play a three, three for five. Yeah. So I think the condition might be uh, might, might be tough enough to get off that that we don't see it a whole lot, but I hope so. But but, <laughs> but if it does, I mean it's it's definitely a, a strong card. Like you just know when somebody's going to pop it down and get a high main, and you're going to be like at seven health, and they're going to drive it down and get a crush or something. You just you're just going to throw your keyboard yeah. and uninstall Hearthstone, you know. Yeah, I- I think it's a card that you're going to lose to often enough to really be annoyed by it. Like, you know, once or twice a week, maybe. (laughs) But, you know, like, if you're playing web spinners, it often gives you, like, these little crappy beasts, like Hungry Crab and Angry Chicken. So, like, that that might be a way to kind of feed it. Like, you know, you're holding on to the Angry Chicken until Mm -hmm. turn six to play. Yeah, another thing, like, web spinners, sometimes, like, you play web spinner on one, but then, like, later on, Sometimes you're holding on to either just like a Hellmaster or just Kill Command Synergy. So like West Spinner might be a thing where like if you're not able to play it early, you just kind of hang on to it to play with Wrangler. So you have like a, you know, a six mana, one, one, three, three, random beast. Uh, so it might be a situation where like it's a little bit easier to get off. Uh, but just like a normal game trying to curve out, uh, I, I think it might be a little tougher. And it'll be tougher if... If everybody plays it and hunter yeah. script or mid range, because like I said before, before we really had like Undertaker Hunter and all that, when it was just like, you know, the the Buzzard Unleash, like you knew they had Howl Master, you knew to clear the beast off before anything else, to, to kind of deny that, and so I think people would play around Wrangler, so might not see it, but if we do see it, it, it definitely could be could be strong, could could be annoying. All right, yeah. And Bulk, your choice is the Nexus Champion Sarad. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fun cards in the set. The Sky Captain Crag, the you know the the Charge Pirate, kind of fun. The Dread Steed, something where like you just can't die unless you silence it. It's kind of fun. Um, but I kind of like Sarad. Uh, you know, we've we played around with, and you played around with Nefarian. You know, getting random spells is really fun. You you know, there's all kinds of things, like I killed a hunter with a kill command. I mean, just situations like that are, are really fun. Being able to play around different things, getting getting traps as a as a warrior, just all kinds of fun things. I think Sarad is is a decent card. It's 
it's just like I don't I guess depends on how the meta like how fast or how slow it goes it's kind of hard like you you're probably not playing Sherrod on curve because it's a four or five it might die you you really want to at least get get one card out of it so so now you're playing it like on, on seven um, but you know I, I think it's uh, I think it's an interesting card I think I think it might be a little too slow I, I don't know I think I think if the inspire mechanic does work Sherrod could could definitely be a strong card in inspired decks uh, but just for a fun factor you know just just getting random spells and trying to use those creatively and and all that um, you know that's kind of why that's that's one fun card just just all the different options you can get on different classes and just being able to use those definitely I will say it also has like some of the best sound and oh, the, they're and amazing. The brawl. Like there's, I play with my sound off usually, and th there are a few cards where I'm like, okay, this is on the field, and turn my sound on. <laughs> you know, it's like Whirling Zapomatic and Kel'Thuzad, Nefarian, and I think Nexus Champion Sirad is gonna be one of those cards. Yeah, when when he's pulling the random spell and that little, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. That, like that little portal opens up. I don't know what it's supposed to be showing. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, don't know, I love cards like this, uh, like Nefarian that give you the random spells and yeah. I don't know. I think Nexus Champion. Some people seem to be tempted to be playing cards like this and getting the giving the uh, fencing coach a try. So you could play uh, Nexus Champion on five and get the ability right away. I don't know. I like it a lot. It's definitely a fun card. Yeah, I think fencing coach is is an interesting card. It's um uh, if if inspire takes off then fencing coach will kind of be what mech warper was to gvg i think kind of like that you know it's in every you know mac deck well i mean yeah in every mac deck and then fencing coach would be in every inspired deck it's um yeah it's it's, it's mana you know fencing coach might you know kind of might kind of be enough for for some of these Inspire cards and some of the Inspire decks to to kind of work. We'll have to see. But, uh, yeah, playing playing that and then Sarad, that would that'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, strong. it's a it's a good uh, example of a, a snowballing Inspire card. And uh, in, you know maybe it could have a spot in like the uh, Jessica True Heart uh, Control Warrior Control Pallet that we were discussing yeah. before. I think, I think whatever deck you're putting Nexus Champion in, it's like some of these cards that pull uh, these random spells, these cards that are from outside of your deck, I think whatever they are, they're definitely invested in the long game because that's just the kind of infinite value that you can get out of something like this. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what decks he goes in. All right. And my choice for the fun one is Chilmaw. The new legendary dragon. Um, you know, I mean, basically Chilmaw is like the big brother of the uh, Abomination. <laughs> um, you know, which is not what everybody was really clamoring for. But um, I just think it's a really interesting card. Um, one, because it's the first time, I believe, that we've ever seen a conditional death rattle. Uh, which is kind of interesting. So it, it's, you know, you have to question when you're when you're playing against this: is the death rattle going to go off or not? And how are you going to? I mean, I guess you kind of have to assume that it does. But you know, it's just another. I think it's it's a playable card uh, in a dragon deck that gets another dragon out there and is maybe kind of a a firewall against um, you know. It, early aggression that got past uh, you know what you had in the early and mid game I guess void colors kind of I guess kind of a conditional death rattle probably the only yep. other oh yeah you're right and, and it's sort of the same situation where like I play it and you're like is Malganis going to pop out of this or is it just you know nothing going to happen you you kind of there's kind of a little bit of a risk there 
when you kill it? Do you wait to kill it? Do you have an answer? Or do you, you know, does that give them time to get a demon in hand? Cool. So chill I think um, the the stream where where they play uh, the the latest one. Uh, somebody played Chill Mall, and then the, uh, the opponent it was kind of the same thing. It's like, I don't know if this is going to proc or not, you know, because you don't know if the whole dragon, so it's kind of the same thing with uh, the Void Collar here, where, you know, you kind of might be scared to kill it, but Void Collar doesn't have taunt, so you can right. kind of decide that with Chill Mall, sometimes you're just going to have to, like, you don't, you don't just... really have a choice. Absolutely. That can be an advantage of the Void Collar, though, because, I mean, People hate killing Void Caller, and Void Callers get to do a lot of damage yeah. because of people playing around them. Whereas this yeah. is, you, you know, I mean, three it's the three damage AOE can be bad, but it's it's probably never as bad as Malganus, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, yeah. Show them all is super interesting, and I kind of wish... Um, that it was maybe, and it may probably be too strong, but I kind of wish it was a battle cry, or uh, that it only affected the opposing minions. I think it would, it would be a, a the card that like would really, really put dragon decks over the top. Um, but it is, I think it's the only seven mana dragon, so that's that alone is kind of interesting, right there, to help fill out the dragon curve. Yeah, you're definitely looking. For more dragons to put in your deck, and it's not always going to be Yasera, Chromagus, Nithar. Yeah. Chumaz, he fits pretty well. Yeah, and can, of... can kind of help to set up a board for Chromagus or Yasera. That's true. That's definitely true. A lot of people are, are talking about him as the uh, as on the answer to patron, which I find interesting. That's the other thing I really wanted to bring up is that 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 three damage. I mean, I wouldn't call it the answer to patron. It's but well, yeah, a tool, but, a tool to fight patron. That is a very big perk. That three damage AOE. Yeah, it's true. They have they have no silence. They will <clears throat> have to uh, beat their way through Choma at some point. And if they have patrons on board, then they're all going to be. Gone. You obviously, I think they'll kill it no matter what. They're not going to um, wait. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they'll if if it ends up being indexed, they'll figure out how to recognize that. And yeah, have a plan ready to deal with it. I wonder if you would see them maybe run silences in patron if it if uh, Chomaw proves to be effective. Maybe you see them. Like, yeah, I think Chomaw would have to be really effective. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm I, I don't I'm not really on board with uh, you know the answer, but it's it is interesting that it's kind of a tool that that might be used in some decks to fight patron. Yeah, very. Like in THL, you know, if if someone is known as a very good patron uh, player, maybe you'd put Chomaw on that deck with, with some dragons. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that you, it has to be in a dragon deck. Yeah, I mean, that's that is true. It's it's terrible if it's not in a dragon deck. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, but fortunately, I think dragon decks are going to be pretty good. Yeah, and I think I that, hope so. I think that they're gonna the the density of the dragons is gonna go up, and I think that that's really gonna help them a lot. I mean, I think you could it's conceivable to get dragon decks with. Eight to ten dragons in it now. Yeah, I could see it happening, especially since Twilight Guardian. I mean, normally the eight to ten number seemed way too high, and you'd have to compensate for it with a lot of early game. But now that Twilight Guardian's a taunt at four, that helps out a good amount. All right. All right. Well. Um... Uh, that is going to wrap it up for us, guys. Would you like to have anything to add? Uh, happy TGT pack opening tomorrow. Yeah. That's going to be really exciting. Uh, we, you guys want to pick times? What do you think? Uh, for release? Yeah. I'm thinking, uh, I think what most content comes like 1, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm yeah. I'm thinking maybe around then, maybe a little bit later. Hopefully in like an hour and a half. I know there was there was a <laughs> post on Reddit earlier today where the people were some 